So in order to understand what's happening, we need to take an even closer look at the electrostatic chuck. So in an exploded assembly here, you'll notice that the electrostatic chuck is made up of different layers. So we pop the wafer off the top, and then you go layer by layer. This is how some of these electrostatic chucks are constructed. You have a top plate, and then right below that generally ceramic top plate, you have a couple of very thin layers, an electrode and a heater and a bonding layer. And all of those little thin layers are protected by an epoxy. Looks like a ring here. It seals the outside diameter of the electrostatic chuck. And all of this is sitting on top of a base plate. So this is an actual electrostatic chuck. On the left hand side, you'll see a wafer sitting on top of it. On the right hand side, you'll see no wafer on top and you'll see an actual E-seal that's sitting in the tiny little groove um, that's usually um, or that typically comes with epoxy in it when you buy a new electrostatic chuck. Now, the epoxy is inherently chemically resistant to nothing. It's very weak, right? So it will protect in a physical way the electrostatic chuck. But when you introduce it to chemistry and temperature, the epoxy becomes the point of pain. So when we cross-section electrostatic chuck and you look at these layers, you actually look at the spot where the epoxy is on a new electrostatic chuck, it's protecting these thin little layers that we just talked about, right? So you're probably saying, okay, what's the big deal? And in this configuration, really there is no big deal. For reference purposes, there's usually a focus or collar ring that sits around the outside diameter of the electrostatic chuck. So what we're gonna find is this tiny little gap here between the focus ring and the outside diameter of this chuck is the problem area. Why is it a point of pain? So earlier we talked about inside of the process chamber, we have plasma, right? The plasma comes in and it's flowing through the chamber and it gets everywhere. You want to control it, right? And just have it so that the plasma is useful in your process at the wafer surface but controlling where the plasma goes after that is not an easy thing. So due to tolerance stack up, right, the inside diameter of your focus ring and the outside diameter of your electrostatic chuck can't be the exact same dimension. You will not be able to install the ring over top of the chuck. So there has to be some type of gap here. And we're talking about maybe a few thousandths of an inch, not much. But again, when you're talking about the world of plasma and gas molecules, you don't need much of a gap for the plasma to get in there. Here's what's happening. The plasma is getting into that little groove, into that gap, right? You can see it flashing right now. And eventually it just wears away and eats away at this epoxy that's generally some type of silicone. It's not very chemically resistant. Eventually, it wears all the way to the point where you are now in contact with these thin little layers that are part of your electrostatic chuck. And now that you're messing with the internals, I'll call it, of the electrostatic chuck, you are messing with its operation. And in a lot of cases, what happens next is you get an arcing. The wafer and the electrical part or the metal part of those layers turned into basically a capacitor and eventually you get an arc. And then that arc leads to very bad things, right? It leads to particles, it leads to your electrostatic chuck getting destroyed and needing to be replaced. Um, it could be an unchucked wafer during processing. It could show up in lots of different ways.